It's week 16 of the National Football League, and we'll see DJ Moore. He comes into this one fifth in the NFL in touchdown receptions. It's the Jets and the Jaguars on Thursday night primetime. We have a cold night in the Northeast. A bad evening to be without a parka, but we are set for football at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Tonight, the stage is set for our final Thursday night game of the year between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the New York Jets. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Jets ball club. They come in playing some decent football, five and three in their last eight games. And the offense last week, they had things humming. If you're a defensive player, you may get overshadowed a little bit, but you're really buoyed by what your offense is doing. Meanwhile, for the visiting Jaguars, they come in on a good run, winners of five of their last seven. former Michigan State product who's now in his 11th NFL season. After what we saw last week, over 400 yards passing, I, the obvious thing is to go talk to him. I want to talk to his receivers, and boy, were they enthusiastic about what happened then. And they can't wait for this week's game. He was hitting them outside, over the middle, everywhere. And for his efforts, of course, AFC Offensive Player of the Week. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. Call it officially a loss of two on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. Well, this defense for the Jaguars, they were very good in the win over Dallas a week ago. And no matter what's done throughout a ball game, it always comes back to blocking and tackling. That's the essence of football. But I think it's hard for people to understand just how difficult it is to tackle, especially open field. Very few missed tackles on tape that I saw last game. This team does a nice job of getting their opponents on the ground. To throw again on second down, Cousins. And that's complete to K.J. Osborne. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets them up for third down. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. And he will find the open man. It's D.J. Moore. And he is going to have the Jets first down. He's able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Charles Thursday night game, I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat, is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you. And you know what else you're looking for? What's that? Who are the freshest guys coming off of the last game to play on a Thursday night? Guys have a little extra pep in their step, you go to them early and often. The numbers for him from a week ago, Eight catches, 65 yards, and a touchdown as well. And they think they have a matchup advantage in this one. They're going to try and find some space for him to work and make sure he touches the football. Looking to throw again on second down. Cousins. And he's got the hook up to Moore. And he'll go down, but not before getting the 
is inside the 30. And a stoppage here. We're going to need to take a moment as a jet was shaken up on that one. Always unfortunate to see an injury, especially this close to the end of the regular season. We'll step aside. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. They'll run for the first time with Clyde Edwards-Alaire. And this time they were waiting for him as he'll be knocked out before he can get back to the line of scrimmage. Second down, back to Edwards-Alaire. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. Play fake, Cousins. And this pass broken up. Uh, the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. Zerline's kick is up and through. And the Jets hit the ball first. It's 3 0. No touchdown there, but if that first drive is any indication, looks like they're going to have a pretty good day passing the football. I would say confidence would have to be pretty high after that first drive, they're able to throw it almost at will. You're exactly right. They didn't get the touchdown, but three points serves as a nice notice about how this offense is going to move. Now a hit and a loose football. And it's scooped up by the Jets. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. As that ball got away from him, and he saw the opposing team recover it. You felt his pain? Oh, I felt his pain, and you know what was going through his head. Tuck it away. Mm -hmm. Take care of the ball. All the things he hears all week in practice, he didn't carry it over into the game. And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Here's Joe Mixon as they start on the ground. And he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28-yard line. The numbers for Mixon last week, 12 carries, 64 yards. And now that he's playing a Thursday night game short week, you know he spent a lot of time in the trainer's room in the cold tub trying to get his legs back for this game. Second and five now. Smith working left side. Andrews with it complete. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. A lot of tight ends just use their size and their strength, try to occupy some space to kind of body people away and catch the football. But not this guy. He's a refined route runner. Makes me wonder if he took some dance classes in his background with his footwork. The Smith's throw there, taken in by Smith. Inside handoff to Mixon. And he'll be tackled at the 45, following a gain of just two. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Now Gino. And that is incomplete. Jack Fox out to punt here on fourth down. Back deep to return is K.J. Osborne. He gets this away. It's a good one. Drawing toward the sidelines. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. So we take a look at the playoff picture in the AFC as the Jets come back out on offense. They come off a victory over the weekend, but now the quick turnaround here for this Thursday night game. How does that affect how teams like this approach these short turnarounds? Well, wins and losses always factor into, you know, how you're getting ready for the next game. But equally as important when you have the short turnaround, what is your injury situation? Are you losing key guys? And if so, how well have the backups prepared for this? Because you don't have much time to get them ready. They have to be ready before this week in order to play well in this game. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. First and ten, it's Edwards-Alaire with it. 
And he'll get a few yards here to the 34. Now well, hang on here a second. Looks like a Jaguar in some obvious discomfort from that last play. But not what you want to see this late in the season. Medical staff is going to check on him and we'll step aside for a moment. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. To throw, Cousins. And able to find Alan Lazard. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. 23 yards to pick up there. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 43. From the gun, here's Cousins. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's more. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. A shotgun snap and a give to Edwards Alaire. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Edwards Alaire, they'll try to run for it. And he picks up the first before he's taken down at the 29. So just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. Throwing, Cousins. That ball caught by the former Toledo Rocket, Deontay Johnson. And he's brought down here just outside of the 20. Nothing fancy on first down, but a very consistent type of a play. Hit that slant. A lot of people call it an extension of the running game, and it can be if that pass is completed. Because you hit a guy on the run like that, he often can go for big yardage. Sets him up nicely for second down, staying ahead of schedule. Throwing again on second down. Cousins, he's got the hook up to Lazard. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. It's a good gain of 11. Sets him up first and goal. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Cousins. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. Second down and goal. Cousins. And he comes back with one complete. They were held to a field goal on their first drive. They want six now, but it's third and goal. Cousins now. And this will be caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. Alan Lazard, his fourth touchdown on the year. And they are able to add on to their advantage. That's just how they do it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy hit a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. So an early 10-0 lead for him now as they kick it away. And a touchback as Dorch elects not to return it. So time to see Jacksonville again on offense for the second time here in this game. And listen, these Thursday night games, they're tough on the body. You just played on Sunday, 72 hours later. Hey, it's game day again, but... I have to think a Thursday night game in September much more preferable than a Thursday nighter in December, no? Well, there's no doubt about it. You mentioned how tough it is on the body. How about the mind? You're already tired, fatigued, right? Trying to battle for playoff spots. And here you have the quick turnaround. Now, the flip side is, if you take care of business, win that Thursday nighter, you go into a mini open week. Gives you a few extra days to heal up the body and the mind 
before you play your next game. Throwing on third down, Smith. He'll be taken down. The Jets get in there for the sack. Matt Judon in there to get him. Sack number 14 for him on the year. You know darn well both of these teams reviewed the film and saw that his defense had five sacks last week. they got to keep their QB upright. And they're going to try their best to do exactly that. But they're facing a team where getting to the quarterback is a mindset. It's a mantra for them. And they play a game within the game. And you know what it is? Let's race to the quarterback and see who gets there first. Here's Jack Fox now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Jets will take over. But now this offense comes back out onto the field. They're looking sharp out early to a 10-zip lead and looking for more as they've got it first and 10. On play action, Cousins. And his throw is incomplete. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. Now Cousins. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. On third down, Cousins. Under pressure, and down he goes. And the defense coming through on third down. A loss of seven to bring up fourth. Well, the pass rush has been a real strength of late. They know how to get after the quarterback. Absolutely. Four sacks last week. That's their first one here. Anything in particular you've seen from them or on film? I think that they're winning athletically up front, winning those one-on-one -on -one battles, but also when the offensive line wants to keep everyone in and mass protect, they know how to scheme their way back to the quarterback as well. Second quarter now from MetLife Stadium. The Jets with the football here. Anger is on to punt, and he gets this one away. We'll call that a punt of 54 yards, well struck. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. Jacksonville set to go again offensively. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. Here's Smith. He's got his man, it's Andrews. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. On second down, here's Mixon. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. Second and two is prime time for a little bit of a gamble, isn't it? Open up the playbook, go play action, toss that bad boy deep. But in this situation, go ahead and give it to your back. Let him pick up a first down, keep the sticks moving. Back to Mixon on first down. And yeah, he'll manage to pick up about four in second down. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Again, it's Mixon. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they bottled him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now Smith. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. to throw with Smith. That's out to the flat for Edmonds. 
And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. They go back to the ground now with Mixon. He'll get it inside the 20. And just good downhill running there as he'll take this to the 15-yard line. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember, the last drive, they went three and out. Line of scrimmage, the 15, it's first and 10. Mix it up the middle. Now during that run, an injury here. We got one of those big blockers in some discomfort. Always unfortunate to see an injury, especially this close to the end of the regular season. We'll step aside. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Geno out of throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Traquan Smith, a seven-yard touchdown grab. And the Jaguars have cut it back within a score. Well, on that connection, it looked like they maybe had some pre-play communication. Maybe one of them noticed an area that was open to the defense to get the pass to. When you put the time in, sometimes you have that great silent communication that you just noticed right there because the best quarterback-receiver combos in the NFL, they know how to make those adjustments at the line of scrimmage when they see something pre-play, and they got it done there. Now Matt Prater for the point after. And they're back within a field goal. It's 10-7 now. So a nice drive put together there. They go 75 yards in nine plays. And it results in a touchdown for Jacksonville. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. And this will come out to the 25 as Osborne elects not to return it. The New York set to take the field. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive. They help themselves out. I do have to admit, I like it when it all comes together. When the top part, catching the football, right? Whether you're catching it with your hands or cradling it, comes together with the legs. In this case, the feet did a little toe tap to stay in bounds and complete the catch. And a great job by our crew on the camera shot. Love when you see the grass or on the field turf, those rubber pellets flying up. Great catch. The big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. Off the play fake, Cousins. That's complete out right to the tight end, Trimble. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. To throw again on second down, Cousins. A quick throw knocked away and incomplete. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted three out of five thus far. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Looking for the out route, and he's got more. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. Well, hang on here a second. Looks like a Jaguar in some obvious discomfort from that last play. And not what you want to see this late in the season. Medical staff is going to check on him, and we'll step aside for a moment. A first down throw for Cousins. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. To the air again, it's Cousins. And that'll be incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and 10. To throw is Cousins. 
A swing pass here to Edwards. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 or the 12. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that's going to make it fourth down. A short gain that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. They'll go. It's Edwards alone. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. Right back to Edwards Hilaire on first down. A great move, but it only takes him to the seven. He's dropped there. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Here's Cousins. Caught on the slam. Touchdown, Jets. Deontay Johnson, a seven-yard touchdown grab as his guys are able to extend their lead. That's one of those long drives where not only do you score, but you really tire out the defense, too. That's a great point, because now they've been on the field for a long time. Them going to the bench, trying to make adjustments, trying to figure things out, but they'll do so fatigued. Zerline good with a PAT. His guys will take a 10-point lead. So that one, a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And in the end, it was Deontay Johnson's touchdown catch to cap the drive. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he returns this to the 22. Out is their quarterback with this offense to take over once more. He threw a touchdown pass last time they had it. And they look to get him in the end zone again here as they start with the first down. The drive will commence with a run by Mixon. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. From the 25 on second down, Smith. He's going to air one out. He's got a man complete. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. Well, he's been doing this for a lot of years with the arm strength still there, and he showed it off on that one. And to be honest, this first half hasn't been anything that they'd be really proud about. So they needed something like this to change their fortunes. Now they need to make sure they finish this one off, not just with points, but with a touchdown. And the next-gen stats, they tell the story. That's a full 67 yards in the air. A real field flipper there as all of a sudden they've got a first down in the red zone. And it's caught. And the Jags are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago, followed it up with another nice one here. And before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. Mixon is going backwards as he'll be tackled back at the four-yard line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. From back at the four, here's second and goal. Mixon again. And good work there defensively as they're able to keep him out of the end zone. What a stand this would be if they can get the stop here. Third and goal. Mixon trying to punch it in. And this time he is in. Yes. Joe Mixon, his seventh rushing touchdown of the year. And the Jags are back within a score. Well, he finishes off the drive with a touchdown run, Charles. Remember, he also had a catch on this drive as well. And that's what running backs want to be in today's NFL, a complete back. Three downs, stay on the field, run it, and catch it. And he gets it done. Now Prater to add the PAT. And this is up and good to make it a 17-14 game. So the drive there took six plays, and it all culminated in the touchdown run coming from Joe Mixon. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. A 
Osborne decides against a run back, and this will come out to the 25. Now the Jets offense about set to take over as they head onto the field. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And, partner, as a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now. But let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. And yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. They go play action. Cousins. Now he'll let it go deep right side. It's caught inside the 25. And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. So a big play as it gets him all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. From the red zone now, Cousins. Nowhere to turn this time, and he goes down. Sacked back at the 29. That one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down on the sack. Well, competition comes up in so many different ways. And right now, this unit, their competition is who's going to get to the quarterback the most times. Had about five sacks last week, and we just saw their first one of this game. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And caught by Tremble. And they're going to get him down well short of the first as he can only get this to about the 19. Now a timeout called for by the defense as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Zerline's kick is up and through. And they stretch the lead to six. It's 20 to 14 now. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Joe Mixon and the rest of his offense making their way back onto the field. They're behind in the first half here, CD, but it's not to any fault of their running back. He's had a strong start to this one. And you're right about that, partner, because watching him play, you would think that his team is in the lead. He has been a lot of fun in this contest. Now let's see if they can actually make something happen and put more points on the board behind his efforts. Yeah, I'm curious to see, Charles, if they can play complementary football and get that passing game going as well. He lets it fly for Lockett. Touchdown, Jaguars! Tyler Lockett, 55 yards. And the Jaguars are an extra point away from moving out in front in the final minute of the half. These two teams in this first half, it's been fun. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's not fun for the defensive coordinators, <laughs> but offensive coordinators are enjoying it. Yeah, they're having streaks here, aren't they? Being able to put scores together and, and really bunch them up, and we have a tight game here. You know, we often talk about having the right shoes for the right turf. Today is track shoes, because that's what we've seen with these offenses. <laughs> yeah, it's been an absolute track meet so far, and fun to watch. Extra point good by Prater, and that will give him the lead here as we get on towards halftime. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. Here comes K.J. Osborne out of his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. And the Jets going to go on offense one last time in this first half. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively, they want to play this. 
I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. On second down, Cousins again. And this will be well too low for him to bring in. It's incomplete. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. This time they stay on the ground. And he's going to get this to about the 20, but that is well short of what he needed. The Jaguars now will use the last of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in Brian half number Anger one. On fourth down, here's Brian Anger now to kick this one away. Now it's Lockett. So possession goes over here on the punt. And control of the football, switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. And they're just going to run it here up the middle. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. So we've reached halftime in a wild first half. We'll take a minute to catch our breath as we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, we're into the final three weeks of the NFL season. A lot of races going to be coming right down to the wire. Before we get it back to you guys, let's check out what we have coming up this weekend on the Week 16 NFL slate. Some great games coming up on Sunday, highlighted by a 1 o'clock matchup in Miami. A good test for the Dolphins as they'll take on the always tough Green Bay Packers. Excellent games in the late afternoon window as well. One being out in Los Angeles, where it'll be the Rams taking on the Denver Broncos. Then on Sunday night, wrap up your Christmas Day with a great one in the NFC, the Bucks and Cardinals at 8.20 Eastern time. We continue on with the check of the next-gen stats in that first half for the Jags. And they've had some success on the ground. And with the lead going into the second half, they'll no doubt be looking to keep it going. Meanwhile, for the Jets, there's a look at what they were able to do throwing the football. And they'll need to get things in gear as they trail here at the break. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. This taken in at the goal line. And they'll be backed up to start this drive as he's taken down right around the 15. Out come the Jaguars now as he'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. Mixon will get it to start the second half. And he'll just plow right into a host of tacklers. Nothing there at all, and it'll be second and ten. On second down, here's Smith. And, oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. Here's Smith. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And the offense will cover this one up, but they'll be pushed back inside their own 10. Dangerous spot for them to cough it up. Lucky to have recovered because had the defense gotten it, they were already within a shadow of the goalposts. Yeah, and then you're yelling at your own defense. Sudden change, sudden change. That's not what you want to hear on your sideline. That means you've got to run out there and try and stop an offense who has the ball in a very advantageous position. And the Jaguars send out their punter as he's on here to punt it away. And he's able to get it out of there, and this is a pretty good kick. Oh, the return is Osborne. A solid 12-yard return after the 55-yard punt. And the Jets will take over first and 10. So here's the Jets' offense now as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their own 44. Now Cousins. They'll get that complete to Albert O. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 
That's good for 28 yards. And there wasn't much of a window there, Charles. Had to deal with a couple of defenders, but able to find his big tight end. And, partner, we know double coverage is a challenge for any player to try to defeat. But maybe it's a little easier if you're one of those big tight ends because you have a size advantage on just about anyone trying to cover you, and you use your body to create some space. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 as they've got it to the 28-yard line. Cousins now. He'll find Lazard here over the middle. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. On second down, a run with Edwards Alaire. And he'll get a couple here down to the 22. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Throwing his cousins. They'll set up the screen to Edwards Alaire. And he's going to lose yards. They take him down at the 26. And a stoppage here. We're going to need to take a moment as a jet was shaken up on that one. Always unfortunate to see an injury, especially this close to the end of the regular season. We'll step aside. So here's Greg Zerline now as he'll try for the field goal. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. Zerline's kick is up and through, and they have regained the lead. That's his third field goal now with the ball game, and they needed his leg. This last one gives him the lead. It's been a back and forth kind of a game, hasn't it? Now you got to tell your defense, guys. I need you to make this stand up because we got the momentum going in the right direction, but we need you to make sure we carry it home. Fields it right around the goal line. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. Now comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. On first down, Smith. Left side complete to Lockett. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Out of the shotgun, they run with Mixon. Takes it to about the 37. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Again, it's Mixon. Oh, good move. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. 80 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. Good, strong, explosive run that started inside, which means you've got to control those defensive linemen, the defensive tackles, the nose guards. Those guys have to be controlled. How about the offensive line, the job they just did? Yeah, key that A-gap usually on those runs, right? That's where it all starts because everyone wants to kind of control that area. It disrupts things from the defensive side and the offensive side. As we just saw, it opens up possibilities. Inside handoff to Mixon. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the forward. If they want a first, they need to get the football to the 32 here on third down. Throwing now is Gino. And he's going to have the hook up to QT. And he can only manage to take this thing to the 38, well shy of the first down. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that'll bring up fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. And they have regained the lead. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right. And we shouldn't take them for granted, but I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their histories. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along. 
but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50 plus yarders seem easy for some reason. Cousins now to throw on first down. Now a swing pass, it's Edwards Alaire. And he'll be upended at the 28 yard line. Just a three yard gain there. Looking to throw again on second down. Cousins finding Edwards Alaire once again. And give him six yards here as he stopped near the 35 at the 34. On third and one, here's Cousins. He finds his man, Johnson. And he is going to have the Jets first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. Cousins again. Again, it's Johnson. And they're going to get this up to midfield. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Cousins now from the 50. He'll find his running back, Edwards Alaire. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Second down at four. to throw, Cousins. He'll drop that off to Edwards Alaire. And he'll be brought down, it looks like right at the 40. For a gain of five, good enough for the first down. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're gonna utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time, they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Yeah, this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. Throwing on second down, Cousins. And that would incomplete, but now a penalty flag coming in late. That might be P.I. Well, there were about 70,000 that were quickly calling for the head flag. It comes out there for pass interference. And what do you think, partner? A little sarcasm in that cheering from this crowd here tonight. What they're hoping now is to build a little momentum off of it and give them a more genuine reason to cheer down the road. And a stoppage here. We're going to need to take a moment as a jet was shaken up on that one. And not what you want to see this late in the season. Medical staff is going to check on him, and we'll step aside for a moment. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Cousins to throw it. Finds Lazard quickly on the slam. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 17-yard line. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. First and 10, it's Edwards Alaire with it. And despite the fancy footwork we saw, they'll get to him just inside the 15. On second and seven, Cousins. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. On third down, Cousins. This is caught, and he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. 
I think he has to be saying to himself, how did that not wind up a touchdown? Remember, he just did the tip of the ball across the plane. It's not going to get there, but they're going to be set up in great shape with first and goal. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here at MetLife Stadium. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one-point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. And they'll try the option on first and goal. And this one will wind up with him losing yardage back to the four-yard line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. He kept it in his hands and tried to push it across the goal line himself, but the defensive front wouldn't allow him to do so. Bringing up second down and a bit farther. From back at the four, here's second and goal. Cousins. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. Third and goal for Cousins. Got a man, it's caught. Touchdown, Jets. Alan Lazard with his second touchdown of the night. And the Jets have taken a fourth quarter lead. This has definitely been a back-and-forth affair, and now they have the lead here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and they gave up the field goal on that last drive, as we remember, but it felt like their offense told them, don't worry about it, we got your backs. We'll come back with a touchdown of our own, and they did. Cousins will try and throw, and it is incomplete, so they can't convert for two. And now the lead stays at five. Tough there, good pass, hit the hands. He just couldn't bring it in. And every receiver's coach everywhere. Seeing that play, focus, focus, focus. Watch it all the way in and tuck it away. Taking it about the one. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Now stoppage here. We're going to need to take a moment as a jet was shaken up on that one. We're always unfortunate to see an injury, especially this close to the end of the regular season. We'll step aside. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. We certainly have a good one on our hands. They're trailing after that last touchdown, but now a chance for this offense to try to snag that lead right back here in the fourth quarter. And they work this well upfield across the 45. 109 yards on the ground for him now as he's gotten better, really, as the night's gone on. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Here's Smith. Open man is the tight end Troutman. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. How about this? They'll try the option. Left side. Oh, no, he lost the football. And it's scooped up by the Jets. So that play, I mean, it was pretty well blown up from the start, and it results in a turnover. Yeah, when you're running the option like that as a quarterback, you have so many different keys and reads to make that sometimes as you're making them, you're not protecting the ball the way you should, and it gets popped free. The Jets offensive unit ready to get going here. They'll be hoping to work a little clock and try to add on to this slim fourth quarter lead, but whatever happens on this drive, certainly a huge fumble recovery by their defense at this juncture. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. Now Edward Tolaire. And this has been a recurring theme tonight for sure. Nowhere to run. Back to the line of scrimmage, that's all. On third down, here's Edward Tolaire. Now he won't quite make it. He needed six, he got about five. Fourth down. 
All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. On fourth down, they'll try and run for it. And he's going to have the first down yardage to the 45. Well, we kind of looked at each other as they decided to go for it, but in the end, great execution, a six-yard gain, and it all works out. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. A shotgun snap and a give to Edwards Alaire. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Cousins. That's complete. It's Oku Abernam. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars 16. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. From the red zone now, Cousins. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. 52 yards on the ground for him so far. So third and inches, and this will be the ninth play of the drive. Throwing, Cousins. And this will be caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. K.J. Osborne, his first touchdown on the year. And the Jets are looking to make it two straight as they add on to this fourth quarter lead. We talk so often about how hard it is to win in the NFL when you turn the ball over, and here a late turnover leads to a fourth-quarter touchdown and a two-score lead. And what's more important is being able to take advantage when a turnover presents itself. You've got to come up with points to make the other guy pay. You're able to do so here, and you've got a pretty good chance now of winning this football game. Zerline connects on the extra point, and it gives his guys a 12-point advantage. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Fields it right around the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Jacksonville back on offense and ready to take over. Well, that last touchdown we just saw, what an important one. Now it's back to a two-score deficit for this crew as they take the field here, and they are in desperate need of finding the end zone. Now Gino on first down. That's complete to Davis. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. 15 yards there for number 15. All right, this is the time of the game where they're down a couple of scores. And they've really got to get some yards in chunks. And they know the defense doesn't want to give those up. But they've got to find a way to take them anyway. Now the question is, can they string a few of those together? From up near the 40 now after the big play to start. Here's another first and 10. Now Gino To Mixon on the check down. His second catch. This one not quite as dynamic as his first. And it's second down. To throw is Smith. He'll find Gabriel Davis. And they're going to get this up to midfield. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. From the 50, it's Smith. 
He'll drop this one down to Mixon. And they'll get this down to around the 47-yard line. On second down, here's Mixon. And oh, he sheds a tackle. Now he's got some space. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. They've got a nice little drive brewing right here. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Gino down to throw. And they're going to get this down to about the 37. Throwing again on second down. Smith. And they're going to work this down to about the 32-yard line. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is third and four. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Desperation time for Smith on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Jags come up empty on fourth down, and the Jets are going to get the football back. So now with a two-minute warning coming up fast, that puts a mammoth dent in their comeback hopes. I like how you phrased it. It's a dent because there's still opportunity. They've got to get the ball back on defense, obviously, twice. But guess what? This thing is not close to being over. They need to go ahead and play it out. Not over. As you said, two-score games still. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. On second down, it's Edwards. Give him four yards on the play, and that will lead us into the two-minute warning. So it's Jets football as we get you reset here. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Off the play fake, Cousins. Throw caught there by Osborne. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. They'll run. It's Edwards Alaire. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Up the middle, it's Edwards. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Game in hand, the offense takes the knee. Second and 11 at the 41. Here's Edwards Alaire. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. So he'll take a knee here to wrap this one up, but he's going to want to keep that game ball. He was sensational. And that is no good. I hit it well from distance, but he couldn't work it back in. And this will stay a 12-point game. A higher scoring game, Charles, than we typically see in the National Football League. But the fun to watch these offenses, they were really clicking. It seemed like everything that they dialed up worked. Yeah, it certainly was fun to watch from our perspective. I'd like to be those defensive coaches there. That wasn't a blast for them at all. And let's face it, they all game plan, they all scout, they all think they're prepared. But executing and stopping teams, that's another matter entirely. So for the Jets, 
The win moves him to eight and seven now on the year. And they'll get a few extra days to get ready for next week where they take on the Seattle Seahawks. Meanwhile, for Jacksonville, it's a tough blow to their playoff aspirations as they drop to nine and six. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head to Houston to take on the Texans. Thank <laughs> you.